So with consolidation and related parties, you're always gonna run into these intercompany transactions or intercompany relationships if they're transacting with each other. So you're gonna have a intercompany payable and an intercompany receivable, a due to and a due from. And when you're dealing with a foreign subsidiary that's in a different, that has a different functional currency compared to the functional currency of the parent, you have currency translation adjustments. In this scenario with their intercompany transactions, back to the thousand pounds, you know, gotta love that. So ABC Company UK LTD has an intercompany receivable from ABC Company Holding Inc, the US parent. And right now on the ABC Company UK LTD, that receivable is a thousand pounds. On the flip side, ABC Company US Holding Company Incorporated has an intercompany payable to ABC Company UK LTD. Probably should have used different names. Hopefully you're staying with me here. That, that in US dollars currently is $1,250. Now, when you're consolidating these, you need to eliminate your receivable and payable. And to do that, you need to make sure that they equal. So ABC Company UK LTD, once it's converted, has a receivable of $1,350. There is a $100 difference. So that is a foreign currency gain or loss. In this situation, it is a loss. So, so we can properly eliminate the receivable and payable in this situation. So in this scenario, I'm gonna debit foreign currency loss and I'm gonna credit ABC Company UK LTD intercompany payable. Really should have chose different names, but hopefully this works. And in that scenario, I've then increased the payable to 1350. I can properly eliminate that. And on, from a consolidation basis, I have $100 foreign currency loss from the translation. All right, next consolidation consideration, we need to be able to eliminate the equity section of the foreign subsidiary along with the investment in the foreign subsidiary. Uh, when you're eliminating an investment in a subsidiary, uh, you wanna eliminate the equity and you also wanna eliminate the investment and those two should equal. So in this scenario, Let's run through that. So capital on ABC Company UK LTD is a thousand pounds. It has retained earnings of also a thousand pounds. So total equity of ABC Company UK LTD is two thousand pounds. Now, if we go look on ABC Company US Holding Inc., the investment in ABC Company UK LTD is twenty five hundred, and we're gonna need to eliminate both sides of the equation. So let's let's currency translate the equity section of ABC Company UK LTD. So in this scenario, the capital, remember, is gonna be at the historic rate. So I'm gonna take my thousand pounds that was contributed and it was contributed at a historical rate of 1.2. So that's gonna be $1,200. The retained earnings, remember it's that weird historical average. So in this scenario, it is a 1.24. And then we also need to eliminate retained earnings. So retained earnings, you gotta remember, is that weird historical rolling average. So in that situation, so in this situation, I got a 1.24 rolling historical average rate. I'm gonna take the thousand pounds times 1.24, and I get $1,240. So when I convert the equity section of ABC Company UK LTD, I get a total of $2,440. dollars when I compare that to my investment in ABC Company UK LTD on ABC Company US Holding Inc's books, I got a difference. $2,500 versus $2,440. In this scenario, I have a currency translation adjustment that I need to account for. So in this situation, I am going to run that through other comprehensive income that is not going to flow through the P&L. I'm going to debit foreign currency translation adjustment in the equity section on the other comprehensive income. And then I'm gonna credit investment in ABC Company UK LTD to bring my $2,500 investment and bring it down to $2,440 so I can properly eliminate that transaction.